Good afternoon, everyone. Michael Mills is here to present how to get your franchisees to do what you need them to. Today's webinar is available for CFE credits. If you're attending today's webinar for CFE credit, we want to welcome you this afternoon. If you're not currently an IFPG member, we'd also like to invite you for a free tour of our site and all the features we have to offer. We routinely offer our members ongoing educational sessions just like this one. You could send an email to marianne at ifpg.org for more information. I'd also like to ev let everyone know that the IFPG Franchise Sales CRM has launched. If you're looking for an easy to use Franchise Sales CRM, you could visit franchisesalescrm.com for more information. All the lines will be muted for this call, so please enter all your questions into the question box for the end of the call. If you need anything during the call, please feel free to chat me or you can raise your hand. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to you, Michael. Um, great. Okay. Uh, so let's let's start by uh, introducing. I I guess Seth, why don't you jump in to, to to sort of introduce me and how we how we got to know each other and and tell people on the call who you are. Some of the people on the call will probably already know who you are as well, Seth. But why don't you just why don't you just launch this uh, by talking a little bit about who you are, how you know me, and and what how we're going to get started today. That, that sounds great. So I, uh, this is Seth Letterman. I'm an IFPG member uh, and franchise consultant. Uh, I met Michael years ago when we were both consultants for uh, Michael Gerber. I read the book, The E-Myth Revisited. Many of you are probably familiar with that book. The E-Myth Revisited um, pretty much changed my life as a business owner. I was a physician originally. Um, I had a very busy practice, read Michael's book. I was probably working 68, 80 hours a week at that time and, you know, didn't see a way out of, of building a business that was totally dependent upon me. And I read Michael's book and Michael talked about the purpose of a business is to serve your life and in order for the business to serve your life, it can't be dependent upon you. In order for the business not to be dependent upon you, you needed to put processes and systems in place so that the business can operate without you being there. So I w read that book, I went ahead and applied all those principles and took our practice from a half a million dollars a year to four and a half million dollars a year in about 36 months. Uh, and I was only able to achieve that by working on the practice, not in it. Uh, as I started to free myself up from working in the practice and working on it, I started to get phone calls from colleagues of mine, vendors of mine that were you know, really wanting to know how I achieved the level of success that we achieved in that short period of time. And I wound up on the phone several hours, hours a day consulting other people on what I had learned. Many of them, my vendors that were frustrating me because things were not showing up or showing up the wrong size, the wrong shape, the wrong color, something would break and the serviceman wouldn't show up or, you know, come late. And it just frustrated me. So I'd be sharing with the business owner these frustrations and before I knew it, I was an unpaid consultant, which is a really crappy business model. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I called Michael Gerber and, and told him, you know, that I was really enamored with his book and how much it changed my life. And he said, hey, why don't you come out here and, and see what we're doing? We have a business consultancy. You know, this book was a, really a lead generator for us for our small business consulting services. See what we're doing and, and maybe you'd be interested in, in being a consultant for us. And I was like, where do you live? He said, Santa Rosa. I said, I'm in New York City. I don't want to live in Santa Rosa. He said, no, we're starting a pilot program. We're training other people like you to, to do what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you. So I went out to California, uh, spent a few days there, really, really liked what I saw, went back for a training program that Michael and I had met at that training program. We both became independent consultants, helping other businesses install processes and procedures and making their business uh, a franchisable concept whether they wanted to franchise it or not. I had no intention of franchising my practice but I did want to free myself of the obligation of having to be there every day. But Many of the people I worked with were interested in in scaling their business through multiple locations or possibly franchising it or they were franchise operations that needed help and assistance in in developing these processes and procedures. When I started to get into franchising and was taking a look at franchise operations manual, I was expecting to see a lot more detail orientation 
that the franchise the franchisee would have in order to do the jobs that they need to do on a daily basis. So, for instance, it, it might say when you come in the morning, uh, you know, opening office procedures, make coffee and get the get the office ready for for business. Well, if it just said make coffee, well, how do you make the coffee? Because I've tasted coffee before, and some people make it really good, other people not so much. So what do you need to do to make a really good cup of coffee? It didn't show how to do that. So I, I realized that there were a lot of, of the intricacies and nuances and the detail that was needed to really provide a franchisee with the ability to create a, a reproducible, a predictable, and consistent experience for the consumer, uh, the customer that you as a franchisor are eventually seeing revenue from. You want your franchisees to be successful, they need to be able to have a predictable level of result on a daily basis and the more they understand how to do what they're doing uh, after training the better results you're going to get. So I just wanted the opportunity to introduce Michael to the organization because I thought as franchisors you would see the benefit in understanding what you can provide for franchisees as far as process and procedure development that would have a huge impact on productivity of your franchisees. Great. Thank you, Seth. So I'm not going to go into much conversation today about who I am and what I did. I really wanted to get down to the meat and potatoes of today's presentation on how to get your franchisees to do what you need them to. I will say one thing that when, I mean, this was 17 or 18 years ago when Seth and I started doing this type of, of uh, consulting, what I found and what I think Seth found was that when we delivered the eMyth Mastery program, it was very theoretical. What we found was that our clients were getting a lot of good theory, but they weren't creating processes and implementing job descriptions which is what the whole theory is founded on. And so what we did at our company, at Business Design Corporation, we backed off of that and went to the practical. We, we stopped talking theory and we started to, to help our clients create and implement their operating procedures. And what we found back then, this was in 1997, we, we were actually doing it in Microsoft Word. We were using a, an eMyth tool called an action plan and we would write them up in Word, and if, if anybody out there had been a client of mine back then, you would have got this beautiful binder full of all of your processes and everything organized beautifully on a DVD. It was, it was sort of before the Internet. I mean, it wasn't very easy back then to do things over um, electronically. And it would have been great if you'd gotten my, our operations manual. It would have been great for about eight months or ten months. And then processes started to need to be innovated and changed. And new processes needed to be written. And old processes needed to be archived. And as a result, the investment that you made, you started to lose the investment in creating a process-dependent business. And so all of a sudden we realized what's going on and uh, we created a, a, a web-based application to make it incredibly easy to systemize your business and that's what we're going to be talking about today. I want to begin with a, uh, a slide uh, that, that just talks about a, a survey that we did recently. 75% who responded told us that their biggest frustration was getting employees to do what they needed them to do. And it was followed closely by the hassle of trying to find, hire, and get new employees up to speed. Hey, Seth, just in case we get uh, your phone rings or something like that, can you mute your phone until the end of the presentation? Unless, and if you want to jump in, feel free to jump in at any point. No. So it was the hassle of trying to find and hire and get new employees up to speed. If you, th but if, if you think about this, if you hire a person well, if you onboard them well, if you train them well, manage them well, chances are they will do what you need them to do. And if they don't or they won't, you'll know this before, say, a 60 or 90 day review period, and then you'll let them go and you'll find someone else. But to do this easily and to do it well, you need processes. You need a process for hiring. You need a process for onboarding, a process for training, a process for managing, a process for evaluating. 
as a franchiser, you know the importance and value of having processes, or at least I hope you know the importance of having processes for the employees of a franchise to follow. In fact, you probably have a method right now for delivering processes to your franchisee. But my guess is that it needs work. And this comes back to what Seth was saying a, a bit earlier. I mean, he was using a very simple example of making coffee, but do you have processes for everything? Do you have a process for hiring, onboarding, and training? Do you have processes for your franchisee to generate leads and convert those leads into long-term loyal customers? Do you have a process for your franchisees for delivering an exceptional product or service? Do you have processes for your franchisees to manage for financial needs? All of these things, this is what you're, you need to do. According to our studies, only 10% of franchisors are really successful at delivering an effective set of operating procedures to their franchisees. They might have several processes for one area of the business, but almost always they're lacking in other areas of the business. Fully 90% are doing it poorly. The focus on the systemization process is a low priority, and their operations manual is incomplete and disorganized. Most franchisors see their operations manual not as a way to make a franchisee successful, but as a way of selling more franchises. As a result, the franchisee and their employees, they don't really have the advantage that they could have. They have your brand, which can help when you're an accomplished franchise, but as an emerging brand, that's not going to be enough. So one of the key components to differentiating yourself from all of the other franchisers out there and having franchisees that thrive and add value to your brand is having an organized and modern delivery method for process implementation. Our focus today is on how to systemize your franchise and how to be sure your franchisees and their employees know how to achieve what is expected of them. Now, <laughs> you know, this isn't a terribly exciting task, right? Operating procedures, job description. The successful implementation of it is to be celebrated. It will make the difference between your life looking like this or like this. So we're going to be talking today about how to create and deliver an awesome operations manual. So this is what we're going to learn in today's presentation. First of all, we're going to talk about what an operation manual is and what an operations manual is not. We'll look at why most franchise operations manuals fail to deliver. Next, I'm going to share with you from the knowledge we've gained from the thousands of businesses that we've talked to over the years why it is that you've probably failed in your past attempts at implementing procedures, why your processes get completely out of control, what we call SOP chaos. I'm going to talk you through the five-step business systemization plan. These are five simple steps to getting your processes documented and creating a process-dependent franchise operating manual. I mean, basically a franchise that operates smoothly, effectively. I'm going to show you how simple it can be. And in step four, I'm going to provide a couple of tips on how you can get your processes written, how to get others in your organization to contribute to writing processes. This is not something that you can do all by yourself. I will be showcasing a tool specifically designed to organize and implement your processes. The tool is called the Touchstone Business System. I'm not going to be demoing the tool today. This is not a, a, a demo of Touchstone, but if you are interested, we will be providing you a way to get a demo at the end of the presentation. Today's presentation is a little different than maybe some of the other presentations that you've attended. What we're going to learn today is born from 17 years of experience working with all types of entrepreneurs, helping them get their business from a state of people dependency to a state of process dependency. Secondly, this is not a sales presentation. And finally, as I said a moment ago, it's not a demo of a product or service. I will be showing you Touchstone because it's the best and most widely used process implementation tool available in the marketplace. But I just want to use it to show you how you would use it. It's, it's not going to be a demo of that product. So let me first ask a rhetorical question. What is a franchise operations manual? And, and what's it for? 
I mean, you might say, well, that's a dumb question, but I don't think it is. What a franchise operation manual is not is an employee handbook. An operations manual is very different than an employee handbook. In fact, I was talking with a, a very large um, uh, IFPG member who said that uh, you have to be very cautious about um, uh, offering your franchisees an employee handbook. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a, an attorney now, but an employee handbook is a collection of policies and there are some legal, legal issues with offering a franchisee an employee handbook. Today we're talking about a better way of delivering a franchise operations manual, which is a collection of processes, not policies. And I want to talk a little bit about the difference between policies and processes. Policies are a set of principles that are put into place to define and maintain behavioral expectations. This is very, very different than a process. Policies usually deal with topics like employee behavior, dress code, harassment, cell phone use, travel, things like that. On the other hand, a process is a sequence of steps with expectations that are followed in order to, to, to have a specific result be achieved in a consistent and reliable manner. A process, think of it as a set of step-by-step -step instructions that describe how to do something. So hiring is a process, onboarding is a process, generating leads is a process, converting leads into sales is a process, managing is a process, estimating is a process. These are all processes. Let me give you an example. As part of a Starbucks dress code policy, they allow employees to show non-offensive visible tattoos as long as they are not on the face or throat. And that is why this will not be an employee working at a Starbucks near you anytime soon. On the other hand, an example of a process. This would be the detailed steps taken to make a double decaf, half calf, coca mocha. I don't know if this is a real drink, but if I was a barista at a Starbucks, I would have a documented set of step by step instructions, a process on how to make this complicated concoction. And that's why. You can get your favorite Starbucks coffee at a store in Seattle, in California, in Boston, in Toronto, in New Delhi, India. It will always taste the same. It will be exactly what you want and what you're expecting. So today's presentation is focused on process implementation, not on how to create a policy manual. This was an interesting statistic. One of our franchise brokers here um, They've been in the franchising business for more than 30 years. He's sold more than 700 franchises. He's owned four franchises, and he's helped more than 100 clients become franchisors. He says, and I quote, only 10% of franchisers are really successful at delivering their processes as promised. The focus on the systemization process is a low priority for them. Most of the operations manuals that I have seen are a low quality and serve mostly as a tool to make a franchise sale. And to illustrate this point, I thought I'd actually show you an example. This is an illustration of, of how the typical franchise operation manual fails to, live, to deliver. What I'm going to show you today are samples from an existing franchisor's operations manual. And I've, I've done my best. You're going to see that I've I've blacked out a lot of, of content in, this, um, in these examples because I don't want to uh, embarrass this franchisor. Um, and to begin with, what you're seeing right here, this picture, this is the actual picture of the operations manual. I took this picture a couple of days ago in, in preparing for this presentation. So I laid that operations manual out on my floor and I took a photograph of it and I put papers over the uh, franchisor's name. Um, it's a three ring binder with hundreds of pages of documents and at first glance it sort of looks pretty impressive but let's look inside and see what's in here. So what you're seeing here this is the index so I, I popped some pages out and, and uh, scanned them into my scanner. This is their table of contacts, uh, uh, sorry, their table of contents. 
Remember that an operations manual, it's supposed to be a list of processes, a set of instructions used to train and manage the employees of their franchisees. But what we're seeing here, look in section one, section two, we're seeing information about the franchisor, then information on franchise compliance, where it's got the franchise agreement, it's got a compliance checklist in it. Section three, it's got pre-opening instructions, how to pick a location, the real estate process. Now these things are all very important for getting started, but most of this has nothing to do with the day-to-day -day operations of the business. It doesn't belong in the operations manual. In fact, there are only 16 processes actually documented in this binder. And I listed them right here. I drew an arrow and I went one, two, three, four, five, six. This is ridiculous. There's all this filler. And I'm guessing that's because the franchisor doesn't have their processes documented. They promised an operations manual, but they really don't have one. So this, the problem is that this, this additional filler it gets in the way. It makes it incredibly complicated to find what you need. Now if we go over here, this is actually a job description that I pulled out of the operations manual. Now this isn't terrible, but if you think about a job description, what is the purpose of a job description? How do you use it? The first page of this job description is really just a hiring document. It describes the skill and behaviors of franchisees, a franchisee would be looking for if they were hiring someone to be a clinical administrator. And then it goes into what I sort of would see, like these are checklists. These, I don't quite know why these are here. This to me which should be a process and the process should be a checklist that's completed. So you have a checklist of weekly, bi-monthly, quarterly, biannual, and, and, and annual activities. I mean, again, this should be a very, very simple process. And then it goes into their days off and their hours worked. Again, this just doesn't belong in, 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 in my mind in the, in the job description. It's not until this page where you actually start seeing uh, functions or tasks that someone in this position should be, it should be doing. The daily key performance indicator, tra training sales associates, office cleanliness, maintaining membership sales, setting and tracking goals. This is pretty good. But what's curious, and this is what Seth was saying earlier, what's curious is that none of these processes listed here are included in the 16 processes that we saw in the table of contents. None of them are actually documented in the operations manual. Why? Nowhere in this manual does it explain how to do any of these things. And I'm actually counting up 43 separate processes on this one job description, and there are five different positions in a franchisee on their organization chart. There are actually hundreds of processes needed, but none of them are documented. So why? why? Why is it so hard? You know, I mentioned a couple of slides back that only about 10% of franchises do, franchisors do this well. Why is it so hard? Why don't they do this? Well, almost every franchisor we speak to tells us that they know they need to get their processes written and implemented, but they struggle getting it done. And we believe that there are two key reasons. The first is the lack of a process development plan and the second is the lack of a process development tool. The first reason then, the lack of a process development plan, there is no strategy and there is no accountability for getting the processes written. They just start writing. They just start writing the processes. There's no agenda. There's no plan for getting it done. To assist with that, and this is we're going to go through this in a moment, to assist, if, to assist you with that, we've developed a five-step plan for systemizing a franchise. Our five-step plan is born from 17 years of experience working with all types of entrepreneurs and all types and sizes of businesses, helping them to get from a state of people dependency to a state of process dependency. And we will walk through that plan today. 
The second reason is the lack of a process development tool. They don't have an effective tool to implement their processes with their franchisees. Now, you might be thinking that, um, that with the franchisor that I was just showing you, it doesn't work for them because they're using a three-ring binder. You might be thinking, wow, how old school is that? But be careful of falling into this way of thinking. A three-ring binder is simply a way of sharing documents, isn't it? I mean, it's really just a document sharing tool. Dropbox, Google Docs, SharePoint, company websites, wikis, Windows file folder structures, these are all document sharing tools. And they're really not that much different than a three-ring binder other than they're electronic. Document sharing tools do not work because processes are too complex. Document sharing applications were built for sharing documents. Implementing your operating procedures is a much, much more complex activity than simply sharing documents. You need a tool that's specifically designed for process implementation. And that tool is called the Touchstone Business System. And in addition to the five-step plan, I'm going to showcase this very modern method of process implementation. Touchstone, it's a web-based application specifically designed to organize and implement your processes. Essentially, Touchstone came out of all of the work that we did implementing e the eMyth Mastery program. It was our tactical expression of, of making a, uh, a people-dependent business into a process-dependent business. And if you're interested, again, I'm not going to do a demo of Touchstone today, but if you're interested, we will be uh, giving you an, an opportunity to, uh, to schedule a demo with me later on. So, so, but let's, let's start with the five-step systems development plan. And I'm going to give you a quick overview of the five steps, and then we'll dive into each of the steps in more detail. The first step, actually, it really isn't about systemizing at all. It's about understanding what a successful franchise is going to look like maybe say three years from now the destination so your franchise your franchisee is gonna buy a franchise you want to be able to inspire them you want to be able to clearly define the possibility ahead of them after all if, if they don't know where they're going how are they ever gonna get there and this definition is shared with every new employee and it is reviewed on an annual basis with specifically defined goals that need to, ab to be achieved annually, quarterly, and monthly. Step two, we define the processes that are necessary. How do you generate sales? How do you deliver on the processes you made in that sales process? What back office procedures are going on behind the scenes like hiring, firing, payroll, invoicing, backing up the computers, all of the administrative and financial activities. How do you guide and manage the business from where you are today to where you want to get to? In this step, what you're, what you're describing is how, uh, I'm sorry, what happens. You're not describing how the process is done. That's going to come later. In this step, you're just naming what needs to be done. It's a, it's a very quick process, actually, and a very powerful step to have taken. Step number three is to create the graphic picture of what that destination, what that franchisee will look like. And, and this is what will become their organization chart. In step number four, once you've named the processes, you start connecting them to the boxes on the org chart to create position-specific operating manuals. Think about this. You've identified everything that needs to be done in the business. You've identified all of the positions that you'll need in the business and you've connected everything that needs to be done to all of the positions. You've, com you've created complete functional accountability. Everything that needs to be done is being done by someone in the business. Very, very powerful step to have taken. And in step number five, you'll prioritize and document the processes. Now, almost every business owner I speak to will ask me, how long is it going to take me to systemize my business? Well, the answer to that question really depends on where you're at. I mean, if you have a lot of your processes already documented and you're looking for a better implementation tool, uh, it, it's not going to take that long. Or are you just getting started? If you're just getting started, it takes about six to ten hours to build the systemic infrastructure of your franchise to get through those first four steps of the five-step plan. But building that systemic foundation is a very critical 
and uh, it, it's it's a very powerful step and it makes the rest of the process much easier because now you'll have that structured plan for getting the rest of the work done and again you'll have an inspiring vision to share with your with your franchisees you'll have a clear understanding of all of the positions and processes you need to achieve that vision you'll have created this complete functional accountability you have position specific operating manuals for every box on the organizational chart and you'll have a prioritized plan for getting the rest of the processes written so now we're going to walk through each of those steps um, actually we're not going to go and dive too deeply into the first step because this first step is defining a destination and again what this means is you want to you want to describe what a typical franchise is going to look like say three to five years from now this is such a such a critical step studies show that if you do this and you take action and track and communicate the process that's being made you have a 300 percent better chance of achieving your goals than if you don't take this step but so few franchisors do it and in many cases it's because they don't know how and I'm not going to go into this step in today's presentation because we have an entire presentation on this topic I, I actually have a recording of that presentation if you're interested um, it just in the go to webinar chat box in that control panel on your screen if you just open up your control panel um, type in the chat box or in either the chat box or the question box just type in send link to defining your vision or something like that and, and Rachel will make sure it gets to me um, and then I'll, I'll just send you an email of that link on on how to create a vision it's a really really great webinar that we did on how to create a, a vision and how to create a strategic plan and how to follow through with it and you can do this with both your franchise like your, your own franchise or uh, vision as well as a, a specific vision for your franchisees so once you're clear on your destination once you've got that defined and written down step two is all about naming the processes that you think will be necessary for achieving your vision now I'm gonna toggle over to a touchstone account um, I'm gonna click here on the four key functions it's important to know guys that that you could do this on a piece of paper you could do this in a spreadsheet you could do this in Microsoft Word again you, you could do it with four pieces of paper and a pen but I'm gonna demonstrate touchstone because it's just a great way to organize your thinking actually before I go there let me just uh, come back here and, and I wanna walk you through these four key functions because I think if you can start thinking about a franchise in a new way I, I want you to rise above the landscape and think of it think of, 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 of the franchise as having four key functions getting the business these are all of your sales and marketing processes doing the business these are all of the processes for delivering on the promise that was made in the sales process so this will be things like processes for client fulfillment production customer service all of the processes that directly relate to what you do for your clients running the business these will be all of the processes that are going on behind the scenes uh, process for invoicing paying your bills collections hiring firing budgeting cash flow essentially all of the financial administrative human resource type activities IT type processes all of that stuff and then finally guiding the business these are the, all of your processes for leading, managing, guiding the franchise from where it is today to where you want to get it to. In the simplest of terms, there are only four core activities that happen in a business. You've got to get the business, you've got to deliver on the promise, you've got to collect and pay for the goods and services performed, and you've got to guide and manage things. So this becomes your process database. This is where you will store all of your processes, all categorized into four simple key functions. So let me toggle back to Touchstone. And in this first step of the five-step plan, we are simply going to name and organize your processes. You're not going to describe how the process is done. And I, 
I like to typically start here with getting the business, your, your sales and marketing processes, because this is typically where workflow starts. You've got to get business before you can do the business. Now here's an example. I was working with a client recently and I asked him, what do they do to get new business? And his response was, oh, he got very excited. Um, he said, oh, oh, well, well we, we just analyzed our database to get a list of clients who hadn't made a purchase in the last 12 months, but they'd previously purchased more than $2,000. And then we exported this list into a file, and then we created an email, and then we merged that list into the email, and, and I stopped him at this point, and I said, whoa, 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 whoa. My question was, what do you do to get new business? Not, how do you do it? So, if what you are describing to me, if what you just described to me just now, if that were a process, what would the name of that process be? He thought about it for a moment and he said, ah, retargeting past clients. And I said, okay, great. Is, that's a sales process, right? And he said, yeah. So we clicked here and we clicked up on here, add a new process, and we typed in here retargeting past clients and we clicked save. And then I asked, well, what else do you do? And all of a sudden, he totally got it. He started rattling off all sorts of things. He said, oh, well, we, we use Facebook. So we typed in Facebook. And we use Pinterest. And we typed in Pinterest. And we do trade shows. And we do email marketing. And we do blogging. And we do LinkedIn. And, and we just writ, writ, wrote all this stuff down, put save, save, save. And once we had identified all of the sales processes, we went step by step through each of his other four key functions. So we listed all of his processes in here, and then after we listed all of his sales processes, and you'll notice that we started to organize them in different categories, then we went to the next key function. We went to doing the business and listed all of his processes there, and then we went to running the business and listed all of his processes there, and then we went to guiding the business and listed all of his processes there. And we, we essentially created a, a collection of his processes. This took a couple of hours. This does not take a long time. But it, it is a very, very powerful step to take because you get a blueprint of your business in terms of all of its processes. And you're setting up the ability to then get those processes written. You're essentially creating the table of contents of your operations manual in a really organized format. And then we'll go through, we're, we're, it's the first step of the plan, really, of getting them written. Now let's, let's talk about onboarding, because that was one of the key frustrations that we, we found in our, in our um, survey. Onboarding is not selling. It's something that happens behind the scenes. So I think we would put this process here under running the business. It's really sort of an, an HR type of function. So I might even um, actually create a subfunction, a, a category called human resources and save that in there. Now, you might not have an onboarding process. You might think, well, I don't have an onboarding process. I need one. Well, up here, you can actually go to a library of processes. Typically, what happens when you go through this exercise of naming your processes, you'll think of about 60 to 70 percent of your processes. Once you've done that, and we really encourage you to do that on your own, you can actually come up here to a library of processes that we've already written. And you can come through here and you can say, oh yeah, we need an accounts payable process, an accounts receivable process, and we need a budgeting process, and we need an onboarding process. We can come down here and see new employee onboarding, a new employee orientation. You can click save. And this will actually download your processes into your Touchstone account. Then you'd need to go into these processes and start editing them. So you'll notice in this process, and this is a reason why document sharing applications just don't work, you'll notice that this one, this one process called New Employee has four different work plans, a checklist, a form, and a policy. It has seven different tools that are all part of one process. And you'll also notice that it then gets linked, I'll show you this in a minute, to the the job description for that specific, uh, you know, who's going to be performing that process. But what you'll do is you can download this process and you can walk through it and edit it, edit any one of these steps and, um, and personalize it for your franchisees, for your company. And then you can throw it out there to them so that they can, they can do it. 
So essentially the way this works is you just step by step walk through this and then you can click here and go to new employee training and you can go to the new employee checklist, the strategic plan, your management philosophy, everything is right here for you. So again, think about your business first and then once you've exhausted your ideas, then go to, to, to our sample list of processes to help you fill in the gaps. So that's step number one. Let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. Once you've, when you get to this point, you've, you've got your destination defined, you've got a fairly good list of processes. In step three, you're going to create the graphic picture of what a typical franchise will look like organizationally. You're going to create their org chart. Who's going to be doing the selling? I mean, do you have an inside salesperson? Do you have an outside salesperson? Who's going to be delivering on the promise made in the sales process? Is it a technician who's actually doing the work? Is that, is that the same person as the, as the salesperson? Who's going to be doing back office support, like ordering supplies, answering phones, scheduling appointments? Do they need a bookkeeper? If we, if we toggle back to Touchstone, we're going to click. So just a moment ago, we identified all of your processes. If this is all Touchstone was, then it would be a really good document sharing application, a really good way for organizing your processes. But Touchstone is so much more than that. What you're going to do here is you're going to click on Organization Chart, and you will provide your franchisee with a dynamic organizational structure. And by that I mean if as you grow and they grow and they learn more about the functioning of a successful franchisee, you can begin to make adjustments to your chart. You can add positions. You can delete existing positions. You can change position names simply by clicking here and overwriting it and clicking save. You can move positions around. Everything in Touchstone is drag and drop. So the organizational chart turns into this strategic growth tool. You'll train your franchisees to actually use their org chart to plan and grow their business. In step four, you will begin to link the processes that are in your four key functions to specific positions on the organizational chart. You will make it ridiculously easy for anyone to find what they need. No longer do they need to flip through hundreds of pages of some manual or, or hunt down in some wiki or, or website what they need to do. They simply click on their position on the organization chart and they get a list of everything they need to do with a set of instructions on how it is to be done. They don't need to hunt for their processes. They're all in one place and they're just simply a mouse click away. If, for example, if I come over here, um, oh, so how do you link the processes? You, you can actually link processes by clicking on a position and linking processes from the four key functions, but when you're first getting started, we simply, we, we typically recommend that you come here, you go back to your process list, just start anywhere, start in one of your key functions, and just start at the top and click on this on this, posi on this process, and you'll notice right up here, link to job description. When you select this, the org chart that you created appears, and you can decide, well, who's going to do the retargeting past clients? And you're going to say, well, the, the general manager is going to do that, and you're going to go link. And then you're going to close this, and you're going to go back to the next process, and you're going to select it, and you're going to say, who's going to do referrals? Link to job description. The salesperson's going to do this, and maybe the general manager's also going to do this. Now think of how powerful this is. We're actually creating a job description for specific positions on the organizational chart. Every time we change a process, and then you're, let's say we've created a, a job description for the admin position, so these are all the processes that the admin position needs. They just log in, they click on admin, and anything they need is right here. And every time you change it, when they, so let's say a customer complaint system, they click here, and everything they need on the customer complaint system is right here. They click on the work plan, and it walks them through the process. Here's the customer complaint form. They can simply click here, or they can click here, and a 
form pops up or they can download it as an uploaded file. Um, every time you change something, the very next time they go to it, it's going to be the new process. They will always be following the most current and up-to-date process. So when you get to this point, you've actually created complete functional accountability. You've identified everything that has to happen in your business and you've assigned it to all of the different positions in your organizational chart. So they now have very powerful job descriptions. If we come back to this specific position, this is now a list of the processes that someone in this position, I can hold them accountable to. I can use this job description now to train someone, to manage someone, to evaluate someone. It's a very, very powerful step to have taken. This is the type of job description that you're really looking to share. A quick word about job descriptions. Most of the job descriptions that we see are really only used for hiring people. And then once the position is hired, you know, that job description, it gets filed away until a new employee needs to be hired. And then they pull out that old job description. They determine whether or not it's current, it's accurate. They make the changes. They hire the person. And then, the, it, you know, it gets tucked away again. And what you're seeing here, this is a typical job description. This is what one of our clients was using as a job description before they became a client of ours. And as you can see, it's really, you know, it is a sort of a description of the job, but it's really nothing more than a hiring document. Look at this, a gorgeous high-end endodontic practice in Saratoga seeking a highly motivated organized. I mean, this looks like something that you'd see on Craigslist for crying out loud. What if a job description looked like something like this? It was a, a, a position-specific operating manual, something that's used not only to hire someone, but to train them, manage them, evaluate them. So the job description becomes a list of all of the processes someone filling that position is going to be held accountable to. And when a new employee is hired, the job description becomes the training guide. The franchisee simply clicks on the new employee's position and up pops the position's job description. And the person doing the training clicks on each process and the job on that job description and walks through each of the process tool. And the new employee has access to their pro to their position on the org chart so they can they can come back and find out how to do what is expected of them very very powerful step so now when someone needs to know what to do they simply find their position they click on it um, they they look for the specific process they need to do they click on it and it accesses a specific set of instructions on how to perform that process this is such a, a, a powerful step to have taken. You have a blueprint for the franchisee starting with this dynamic org chart that they'll use to track their business development. You'll have a complete list of all of the processes that they'll need to make sure that everything is getting done. You'll have linked those processes to all of the boxes on their organization chart so they'll have complete functional accountability. Everything that needs to be done in the business has been assigned to a position. And now they know that everything that needs to get done is being done. And if it isn't, they can figure out who isn't doing it and why. Very, very, very powerful step. Okay, in step number five, this is the final step. You're going to prioritize your process list in terms of the processes that are the most important processes that need to be written. And you're going to manage the writing of these processes. This is an ongoing practice, something that will occur naturally and, and organically. Writing these processes, it's, it's not rocket science. It's really quite simple, but it's not necessarily easy. It really takes focus. Some of it you've probably already done. Using our five-step plan and, and touchstone, you can actually begin to organize all of your existing documentation so that it can be used more effectively and many other processes that you may need have already been created for you and are available to download and edit. This is not to say that we've completely systemized your franchise. We have not done that. This is not a magic bullet, but it's a, it's a huge head start. Much of the material has already been thought out and organized for you. You just need to customize it for your own organization. So what we've discussed today, it's not theory. It's a structured plan for putting theory into action. 
What I've shown you is a process that we've used to systemize hundreds and hundreds of businesses to bring order and control to that whole SOP chaos. Basically to bring these companies a modern delivery method for their best business practice. The processes that will help your franchises succeed, I mean, if you follow these steps, you'll have all of your processes well organized. They'll be easy to find and accessible at the click of a button. You'll have a powerful way to distribute your best practices, which will make it easier to keep your processes current. And you'll have the ability to make changes on the fly that are available to all franchisees immediately. Your franchisees will be compliant and they will have employees who are easily trained and who are easily trained well. You'll have employees who know what is expected of them. You'll have employees who know how to achieve expectations. And a result, as a result, you, you have a franchise that runs more profitably and more consistently. This is not hype. This is all working knowledge. We've written a step-by-step -step guide, which is a synthesis of our successful strategies, simplified down to the nuts and bolts necessary to get it done without having to read thousands of pages of theory. And we've spelled it out in, in an ebook, and it's available to you that will walk you through these steps. You can do this on your own, or if you need some hand-holding, we actually have programs to assist you. Um, we've had more than 17 years of experience working with entrepreneurs just like you, helping them create process-dependent businesses. It's not that difficult. We usually recommend an hour a week, so it can happen in just a number of weeks. Um, this is my plug today. Uh, if, if you want to take a step, a next step, I'd suggest scheduling yourself for a personal demonstration of Touchstone so you can really see what this tool can do for you. You should be able to click right here. Um, in the go to webinar control panel in the, either the chat section or the question section. Uh, just type that you'd be interested in a demo of Touchstone. Go to webinar will save that text along with your name and email address and Rachel will be able to let me know that, that you've been interested in what we've talked about today. Again, and this presentation is not meant to be a demo of Touchstone. We just wanted to let you know that the tool is available in turn to encourage you to really find out more. Um, and by the way, if you take action in the next seven days, and by that I mean schedule a demo, we'll, we'll send you a free copy of the ebook on how to systemize your business, and then you can start systemizing your business following the instructions in the book. Um, okay, uh, Rachel, uh, we're at the end. Do we have, have any questions? Yep, we have. Well, I know, Amy, your hand is raised. Where'd you go? Maybe her hand isn't raised. Okay, let's see. I don't see anything on my end yet. Okay. Let if me, anybody let me has look. any questions, you can raise your hand or, and I'll take you off mute or you can put it in the question box. I'm seeing something at, at I'm seeing something at my end, Rachel. It, okay. um, someone's written in our industry, we have to deal with them with a lot of employee turnover and it's an uneducated labor pool which makes quality service difficult. Can can you help us with this? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things that, that if, you've re if you've read Michael Gerber and the E-Myth, you know, Michael gives you this, this impression that you, if you've got documented processes, that you can just walk downstairs and find anybody on the street and they can do a great job. I don't agree with that. Um, I still think it's really great to get good people. If you've got to find good people. But that said, it's very difficult to get good people if you don't have a hiring process, if you don't have a training process and an onboarding process and a management process and a review period process. So let the documented processes do the training for you. Use those processes to train your employees. Create the procedures and train your people in it. In fact, one of the things that we encourage you to do is actually track the time it takes you to train each of those processes and then multiply that time by how much it costs you to do that and then you you can actually know exactly what it costs you to train a position this is this is also a really great step to take but you'll you'll also you'll be able to know faster if a person's a good fit 
and they need to be a good fit for both the organization, your culture, and the position. And by training people to their processes, you can actually you can actually do that. You, you'll create a game worth playing, a place where people want to be because you'll have a good fit for the person that you're looking at to the position that they're actually fitting into. Um, if your employees don't like you and your managers, it's just not going to be a good fit. So processes really help with that. Any other questions? Oh, there's, here's this one other question. We have a learning management system that we make our technicians go through. Um, how is Touchstone different? Um, well, a lot of learning management systems, they don't work very well because they're sort of boilerplate videos and they're all done when you, when you educate and bring on a new, uh, a new employee. Uh, Touchstone's not a learning management system. It's, it's, a, it, it's a process implementation tool. A learning management system can be really good because it can actually track that people have watched videos and you've walked them through, but usually what ends up happening is that's all discarded. After they've gone through it, they sort of wipe their brow and say, well, we're done with that. What Touchstone does is it gives a manager an opportunity to manage someone to a process. It, you, you can't really manage people. We can't even manage ourselves. How do you manage people? But what you can do is you can manage people to processes. So if they're not achieving expectations, you can bring them back to the process. Now in Touchstone, you can have a video of how to do a process, but what we typically find, you know, in these learning management systems, they're 20 minute videos, 15 minute videos. When you're trying to figure out how to do one of the steps in the process, it, you don't want to watch a 20 minute video again, so you make it up. In Touchstone, you've also got a set of instructions, and so you can go to that specific set of instructions and instantly find what you need to do. So it, it just makes it a, a little faster, a little easier. Um, Touchstone really can supplement a learning management system. That's what I'm. That's what I'm basically trying to say there. Any other questions, Rachel? Are you seeing any other questions? I don't see any right now. Any other oh. last-minute questions? We're getting pretty close to the top of the hour, yeah. so let's let's uh, let's wind it down. Maybe maybe Seth, do you want to say anything to to wrap up before we go? No, that was a great job, Michael. That's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, philosophy and conceptual information to get in a short period of time. Great job. Good, great. Well, um, this completes today's presentation. Thank you for being here, Seth. Thank you, Rachel and IFPG, for allowing me to host today and allowing me to bring this information. You can tell I'm very passionate about. It. Um, I just want to thank everybody for being here. I hope it's been a valuable experience for you. And if you have questions, you can email me at mmillsofbusinessdesigncorp.com. You can go to our website, www.businessdesigncorp.com. We have a ton of free information and free offers there that can help you grow and develop your franchise into a satisfying and reliable enterprise. And thanks for watching, and I'll pass it back to you, Rachel. Okay, thank you, Michael, for presenting. Thank you, Seth, also. And thanks, everybody, for joining the call. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone.